Shape layers are an essential part of After Effects and having a good grasp over the shape layers is very important to create good motion designs and 2D animations. And in this lesson 9 of this After Effects series, we are going to go over the most essential part of the shape layers that you need to know. And by the end of this video, we are going to animate this from scratch. So first let's check out how to create shape layers in After Effects. In the toolbar, this is the shape tool in After Effects. If you click and hold on this icon, we get few options. The first one is the rectangle tool. Now to create a shape, you have to move the cursor in the composition window, click, hold and drag and now lift the click. Now you have created a rectangle with the rectangle tool. Now for the shape layer, the anchor point is not exactly at the center of the shape layer, but it is exactly at the center of the composition window where you have created the shape. But if you want the anchor point to be exactly at the center of the shape layer, every time you create a new shape, go to edit, preferences and general. And you have to check center anchor point in new shape layers and press ok. And now when you create a new shape layer, you will always get the anchor point exactly at the center of the shape layer. And if you want to create a perfect square with the help of rectangle tool, then you have to press and hold the shift key while creating the shape. The next tool is the rounded rectangle tool. With the help of this tool, you can create rectangles with rounded corners. Now while creating a shape with the rounded rectangle tool, if you press the up key, you can increase the roundness. If you press the down key in the keyboard, you can decrease the roundness. And if you press the right arrow, you can make the corners fully rounded. And if you press the left arrow key, you can completely remove corner roundness from the rectangle. Now inside the shape layer, we have contents and inside contents, we have the rectangle shape. And inside the rectangle, we have few more options. The first one is rectangle path and inside this we have the roundness and we can change the roundness of the rectangle from here as well. The next one is the ellipse tool. When you are creating a shape with the help of ellipse tool, you will find it difficult to maintain the radius to create a circle. So to create a perfect circle with the ellipse tool, you have to press and hold the shift key and then create the shape. The next one is the polygon tool. So while creating a shape with the polygon tool, you have to press and hold the shift key while creating the shape to stop rotating the shape while creating it. Now while creating a polygon, before lifting the click, if you press the up key, you can increase the number of sides of the polygon. And if you press the down key, you can decrease the number of sides. And with the lowest number of sides, you get a triangle. So you can create a perfect triangle with the help of the polygon tool. And inside the polygon shape layer, inside contents, we have polyester 1. In polyester path, we have few more options for the polygon. The first one is we can change the number of sides by changing the points number. Then we have position, we can add rotation, and then we have the option to change the outer radius or the inner radius with which we can create interesting effect like this. The next one is the star tool. So while creating the shape with the star tool, again if you press and hold the shift key while creating the shape, you can stop the shape from rotating while creating the shape. While creating a star with the star tool, before lifting the click, if you press the up key in the keyboard, you can increase the number of spikes and if you press the down key in the keyboard, you can decrease the number of spikes. Now inside the star, you again have some options for the star. The first one is you can change the number of points. Then you have position, rotation. Then you have inner radius with which you can change the inner radius. Even you can change the outer radius and then the inner roundness and the outer roundness, which can give you some interesting effect like this. Not only that, all these properties have stopwatch icon. That means you can add keyframes on all these properties and animate those properties. And after creating a triangle with the star tool, from next time when you are going to use the star tool, it's going to create a triangle. To reset the tool to its default settings, all you have to do is first select the tool and double click on it. And now if you create a shape, it is going to create a default star. The next one is the paint tool. Now, if you want to create a shape like this, there is no way you can create a shape like this with the 
default tools in After Effects. So for that, we have to use the paint tool. So this is the paint tool in After Effects and the shortcut key is G. And with the paint tool, we are actually going to draw the shape path of the shape. So let's create the first vector point over here and the next one over here. While creating the next vector point, if we click, hold and drag, we can bring the Bezier handle. Now let's create the next vector point over here, the next one over here and the next one over here and then over here. So from here, we have to break the Bezier handle. So to break the Bezier handle, we can use the convert vertex tool from here. But we don't have to select the tool from here. We can press and hold the Alt key while the cursor is near the Bezier handle. And then if we click and drag, we can break the Bezier handle. Now we can continue creating the shape from here. By adjusting the Bezier handle while drawing the shape path to get the desired shape. And here we got our desired shape layer. Now suppose we want an opening of the shape path from here. So for that we have to select both the vector points of the edge and then right click on it. Go to mask and shape path and uncheck closed. And now here we have the opening. Now we have to select the vector point and then Activating the pen tool, we can continue creating the shape to get our desired shape path. Now let's check out the basic components of a shape layer. Fill, stroke and the shape path. Change the fill color, we have to select the layer. At the top, here we have the option for the fill color. If you click on this rectangle, a color wheel is going to open up. And from here, we can select any color as per the requirement and press OK. And if we click on the fill text, the fill options is going to open up. Right now, solid color is selected. Here we have three more options. One is we can cancel the fill color. Next one is linear gradient. And the last one is radial gradient. Here we have the option to change the blending mode of the fill. And here we have the option to decrease the opacity of the fill. So let's create a gradient. For now, I'm going to select the linear gradient and press OK. And from here, we can change the gradient color or gradient styling. So let's select this button. And from here, I'm going to select the red color. And let's select this button and let's select some different color. I'm just selecting colors randomly. If you click somewhere in between, we're going to select a third color stop. So from here, we can even select another color in the gradient. Now, if we press OK, here in the shape, we have a line over here. Now, if we simply click and drag, we can adjust the gradient radius and the way it's going to blend between the colors. Now, to add a stroke, we have to click on the stroke text the stroke options is going to open up. Now, the first one is solid color, then we have linear gradient, and then we have radial gradient. So for the stroke, let's keep it solid color. And now we have the similar option over here for the stroke as well. So press OK. And from here, we can increase or decrease the stroke width. And from here, we can change the solid color of the stroke. And when you have the shape layer selected, you can change the fill and the stroke color directly from the properties panel itself. And when you create a shape layer in After Effects, inside contents, inside the shape, you have separate transform properties for all the shapes other than the layer transform properties. So in the shape transform properties, we have the anchor point, position, scale, and then we have skew with which you can distort the shape in a certain angle and from here you can adjust the skew axis and then we have rotation and opacity okay now let's check out the type of shape paths in after effects there are two different types of shape path in after effects the parametric path and the bezier path so when you create shapes with the help of any of these tools you create parametric shape path and inside the contents we have the shape group and inside the shape we have the polyester shape path so this is the parametric shape path and inside this we have few 
options with which we can change the shape path based on the requirement. But when we are in parametric shape path, we cannot change the vertex with the help of the convert vertex tool or bring the Bezier handle and add some curvature with the help of the Bezier handle. And when we create a shape path with the help of the paint tool, we create a Bezier path. And inside the shape layer, we have contents and inside the contents, we have shape one. And inside shape one, we have the shape path. Now, when we select the shape path property, we can select a vector point and now we can change the shape path from the preview panel itself or change the curvature of an edge with the help of this Bezier handle. And you can even convert a parametric path to a Bezier path. For that, you have to select the parametric path and then right click on it and convert to Bezier path. And now we have converted the parametric path into Bezier path. And now we can change the shape path from the preview panel itself as per the requirement. But once the parametric path is converted to Bezier path, there is no way to go back to the parametric path. So this is what you have to keep in mind. Not only that, you can even create a shape with the Bezier path when you are creating the shape with the shape tool. So for that, you have to press and hold the Alt key and then create the shape. And right now, the shape that we have just created has a Bezier path. And now let's check out the shape groups in After Effects. So when you create a shape in After Effects, and now while keeping the layer selected, if you create another shape, you are going to create the shape inside the same shape layer. And now these two shape forming a group. And here under contents, you can see the same. We have rectangle one and rectangle two. Now, if we create another shape, let's create a star over here. Now we have one polyester and two rectangles inside the single layer. So as the shapes are in a single layer, so when we are going to move this layer, all the three shapes are going to move together. Now, if you want to create a shape in a separate layer, you have to deselect everything, especially deselect the shape layer. And now you can create another shape. And now you have created the shape in a separate layer. Now in this layer, we have an ellipse. And now if we select this layer and move the circle, only this circle is going to move. Now in the layer with multiple shapes, inside the contents, we have three shapes and inside each three shapes, we have these transform properties. Now if we select all these three shapes and right click on it, we can group the shapes together. Now inside the group, we have these three shapes and we have another transform property for this group itself. So we have a layer transform property, then the group transform property. And now we have individual transform properties for each shapes. Now, when you have multiple shapes inside a single layer, it is difficult to select a single shape from that layer. So for that, you have to double click on that shape and then again, double click on it. And now you can select the shape from that layer. And now let's check out much path with shape layers in After Effects. So let's create two circle shapes inside a shape layer. Now inside this layer, here we have an add button. Click on it and add merge path. And make sure the merge path is below the shape layers. Now after adding the merge path, you can notice that both the circle shapes are merged. Now inside the merge path, we have different modes. Right now we have add. Now if we click on subtract, it is basically going to subtract ellipse 1 from 2. Now, if we change it to intersect, we can get the region of intersection between the shapes. And with exclude intersection, the intersected area is going to be excluded and the rest of the area are going to be visible. There are lots of ways we can use the march path. For example, let's change it to add and let's add few more circle shape layers. Now we are going to add rectangle shape layer. Right now, all the shape layers are merged because we have add in the march path. Now what I'm going to do is place the rectangle shape below the march path. Now the march path is not getting interacted with this rectangle shape. Now we're going to add another march path over here. Select contents and let's add another march path and place it below the rectangle one. And in March Path 2, we're going to change it to Subtract. And now we get a shape of a cloud with few ellipse and a rectangle. Now let's check out how to morph shapes in After Effects. So let's create a circle shape layer over here by pressing the Alt key to create a Bezier path. 
and let's place it over here and let's open the ship path property and let's add a keyframe on the ship path. Now let's jump on to next one second and let's select the ship path property and double click on it. Now we have the transform box. Now we can actually move the ship. Now we're going to press and hold the shift key and then move it so that it locks in the X axis. Now again, we are going to select the ship path property and select one vector point and press and hold the alt key plus the control key to activate the convert vertex tool and click on this vector point to break the Bezier handle again, click on this vector point to break the Bezier handle and this one and this one. And now we are going to change it to triangle shape. So let's select these two vector points and place it over here. And let's double click on the shape path to get this transform bounding box. And let's scale it a little bit in the X axis. Now let's select the keyframes and easy is it. Now, if you preview the animation, you can see the circle is transforming to a triangle shape. So After Effects is basically adding the in-between keyframes such a way that the vector points have to travel the minimum distance. So the vector points are not going to move in a curved path while you are morphing ships in After Effects. Now one more thing, with the shape path property, you cannot use the value graph editor. If you select the value graph editor, you will be back in the speed graph editor. So you can only use the speed graph editor while you are in the shape path property. Well, there is another way to morph shape in After Effects, which is by copying and pasting the shape path property. Now let's create a square shape and let's create a circle over here with the Bezier path. So let's add a keyframe on the square shape path property and let's jump on to next one second, let's open the shape path property of the circle and select the shape path property control plus C to copy it and select the shape path property of the square and control plus V to paste it over here. The circle is in a different position. So the positions also changed. So we can simply select the shape path of the square shape layer double click on it to get this transform box and reposition it and place it exactly at the center of the composition window. Now if we preview the animation, we can see the square is morphing into the circle. And this is not limited to the number of points as circle and the square have same number of points. So we can even do it with the polygon. So let's jump on to next one second and let's add a polygon right now over here. Copy the shape path paste the shape path on the square layer. Let's double click on the shape path to get this transform box and reposition it. Now you can see the square is morphed to circle and then to a polygon. And right now if we want, we can even change the shape path manually as well. And now it's time for the final assignment. So now we're going to animate fake 3D gemstone rotation by morphing shape layers. Here we have the shape layers. So let's start with the upper edge of the gemstone. So open the shape path property and add a keyframe on the shape path. Let's jump on to next 10 frame and let's select these two vector points and place it on this edge. And let's select this point and place it over here so that it is properly aligned with this edge of the gemstone. Now let's duplicate this layer one more time. So for that, select the layer and press Ctrl plus T and select the points in this end and move it over here in this edge. Select this keyframes, right click on it, go to keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframe. Now we have a fake 3D rotation. And now we are going to animate the lower part of the gemstone in the similar process. And here you have it. Alright, so that is it for this video. In this video, we have covered the most essential parts of the shape layers that you need to know to get started with After Effects. And in the next lesson, we're going to go even deeper and learn more advanced techniques with the shape layers. So stay tuned for that. And if you like the video, then make sure to hit the like button. If you have any doubt regarding the techniques, then make sure to comment down below. I would be happy to help you out. And if you're here for the first time, then make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification button to stay notified for all the future updates. Until then, goodbye.